What's going on guys? It might not look like it, but this is another bash video. I have this file manager open here because I figured it would help demonstrate better for people just getting used to the terminal, what's going on, since we'll be working mostly with files today. Now, what I'm actually going to be showing you is how to use wildcards in bash. I've mentioned wildcards briefly in a couple of my other bash videos, but they only really came up because I was doing other things in those videos, but I never really slowed down to discuss the wildcards themselves. So that's what I'm going to do with this short video today. So a wildcard in bash works pretty much the same way as a wildcard in poker or any other card game. Essentially, a wild card can be whatever you want it to be. Now, that may seem a little bit confusing, so I'm just going to go into the demonstration now. So, inside of this folder here, start, I have this other folder called files, and there's a bunch of different text files inside of here. They're all named text 1, 2, so on and so forth, all the way up to text 20. Now, what exactly would I do if, say, I wanted to move all of the text files that are text 10 through text 20? Well, one way that I could do this would be to just do multiple CP commands. You know, I could just do text 10 and then repeat that for text 11, 12, 13, but that would take a really long time. There is a way to move all of those specific text files with just one command, but we have to use the question mark wildcard. Now, the question mark wildcard is a single character wildcard. So wherever we insert that, it's going to basically stand for any character or a wildcard character. So the way that we would move text files 10 through 20 is cp text 10, I mean not text 10, text question mark question mark dot txt. So the reason that this will work for 10 through 20 is because obviously text 1 through 9 is only going to have one single digit character after text before it has the dot txt. All of our double digit ones, which are 10 through 20, they're going to have two characters. So we can do that command right there to desktop destination. And you'll see indeed that it did move text 10 through text 20 into this destination folder here. Now, the other wildcard that I believe I showed you guys in my other video was the star wildcard which is similar to the question mark, but instead of star standing for one character, it stands for n number of characters. So any arbitrary number of characters, one through, I guess 255, since that's the file limit in Linux. So the way that we could use that in this folder is, let's say that we wanted to copy all of the text files, because you see I have this one file here. It's a little hard to see the way that my coloring is done in this bash rc file, but it's called makefiles.sh, but that's just a script I use to generate all these files really quickly. Let's move all these text files, but not the makefiles.sh. Well, we can bring back up our old command, but instead of using the two question mark characters, we'll just use the star character, which can stand for one or two characters in this case. And you see it populated our destination folder over here with all of those text files. Now let's combine what we've learned into a pretty useful real world example. So inside of this downloads folder here, I have a whole bunch of different zip files these are zip files that basically just contain font configurations, but you'll see when I copy all these zip files to desktop destination. Let's go ahead and delete everything in here real quick, just so it's a clean destination. 
You'll see when I unzip these that there is more than just the .ttf file inside of these, but ttf is the only thing that I'm interested in. So we just unzipped all of our zip files, and you see there's a bunch of different file extensions in here. There's .txt, there's .eot, otf, ttf, which is the only one that I'm actually interested in. And we want to move that into this folder here, the fonts folder. So we can do that. We're just going to copy star.ttf into this fonts folder. And as you can see, it only copied over the TTFs and nothing else that I don't want. So if this was our real fonts folder, we would have just imported all of these new fonts that we downloaded without having to use any additional tools, without having to use any file manager, and without having to use a bunch of annoying commands just using wildcards in a smart way. Leave a like on this video if you guys enjoyed it, and make sure to share it with someone who you think would find it useful.